started. Um, my name is Margaret Pazala Granland. I'm the director of the TCNJ Art Gallery, um, and I'm here to welcome you all to this evening's launch of the 2021 BFA Senior Exhibition website. Um, I'm going to introduce Lily Gilson. She is a student who's going to be our tour guide this evening as we visit the gallery. Um, uh, just a couple of notes before we get started. This webinar is being recorded, so if you have any friends that miss it or you want to watch it again, um, that will be posted on the Art Gallery website um, by the end of the week. Um, and we also welcome your questions. We'll be using the Q&A feature in the webinar for your questions, so if you have any questions, please type them there. And after we hear from all the artists, we'll have plenty of time for questions at the end. Um, and I think I will turn things over to Lily and welcome you all. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Margaret. And thank you all for being here. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So the title of our exhibition, In Flux, is reflective of the times that we're in. Um, we're emerging artists exploring the world around us, uh, taking everything in and creating work out of perpetual curiosity. Uh, tonight, you'll see the work from 13 artists exploring a range of media. And to start, we have a video walkthrough of our exhibition in the art gallery. Thank you. 
Okay. So up first, my friend and colleague, Ash Aldezar will be showing their work. Hello everyone, I'm Ash Besser. I'm taking a non-traditional take on taxidermy by combining it with painting, illustration, paper making, and installation. My work is focused on human emotion and experiences that are projected onto animals. I use animals to replace a human subject so that my artwork is able to connect to everyone regardless of their identity. Hollow is a private and intimate experience that one person will experience differently from the next. Um, this installation is not just a reflection on sexual assault, but also a reflection on society's history of enabling predatory behavior. All the artwork was dependent on everything else. For the paper skulls, I had to mix the pulp, make wet sheets, and after the sheets were made, I had to act quick and mold the paper onto the skulls. After a couple of days, the paper would be dry and I could remove the paper. Once this was done, I had to repeat this over multiple weeks. This meant that I could not complete the taxidermy mount until the paper skulls were complete. Combining paper making and taxidermy was challenging myself with using delicate and fragile materials while Madison Cascardo. Hello everyone, my name is Madison Cascardo. First, I just wanna thank everyone for being at our show. My installation piece, Epic, it is an environment that may be relatable to some of you or a new environmental experience for others. When thinking about what I wanted to portray with Epic, I wanted to talk about the significance of things having an effect on or feeding into something else, like a domino effect. The same way a stalagmite is formed by the redeposited minerals building up after countless water drops. This can be seen in relation to life. A stalagmite cannot be formed without a stalactite, so one feeds into each other. This process takes a very long time, and in the end, after thousands of years, the stalactite stalagmite will eventually touch, forming a column. This in itself is a buildable project, the way time has an effect on the growth of the stalagmite leading to develop in different ways. Epic is another word for a period in time or in history, much like how we grow in our lives and our own history. Paying attention to form and texture, I use spray foam insulation to build upon the idea of foundation. The spray foam can be manipulated in a lot of ways. Um, if you have gloves, of course, <laughs> to be more than just a household item, my goal is to take the use of something ordinary and completely transform it into something else. Inspired by installation and sculpture artists, Tara Donovan and Nils Udo especially, I wanted to take something environmental and bring it into a space you wouldn't normally see it. Much like a self-portrait, I think my work as an artist has come a long way and my work as a sculptural and installation artist still has time to grow. Just like the stalagmite, we all have time to grow. If it be a physical or visual process of time, it's a memory that I think communicates well with everyone who sees it or walks around it. Thank you. And my next colleague is Addison Cooper, who unfortunately cannot be here tonight, but we have a recorded message for you all. Hi, everyone. My name is Addison Cooper. I would just like to start off by saying thank you all for showing interest in our class's work. In addition to that, I would like to congratulate my classmates for creating an outstanding show and overcoming all sorts of adversity. It's certainly been challenging and restrictive working primarily online, though everyone's immense efforts and care that went into creating the show has certainly paid off. Now a little bit about my pieces. This semester, my work gave me the opportunity to explore new ideas and to express myself in new ways. I created a series of eight pastel drawings. By working in this medium, I was able to quickly explore various themes, all of which are tied to past experiences without fixating on them or overworking them. For me, this was an entirely new approach that also happened to give me the chance to further establish my artistic language through the use of symbolism. My intention for the series was to develop a cohesive grouping of work where each individual piece can provide specific narrative while still working together to create a unified body of work. Creating a body of work this way was important to me as it allowed me to step back and see the big picture, not only in this series, but with my process as a whole. For me, that was incredibly important and something I value tremendously. Thank you again to everyone.
Next presenting artist is Shelly Cruz. Hello, I'm Shelly Cruz, a Chicana mixed media artist. For my installation, La Sala, The Living Room, I wanted to activate the viewer and engulf them in a living space filled with Mexican imagery. Inciting a response to the complex entirety of the multifaceted piece, this piece embodies what is my personal experiences and surroundings as a Chicana individual. In my installation, I decided to include a variety of mediums such as screen prints, textile art, a painting, and digital media. Um, Cacti 1 and 2 are screen prints of bitmapped images I took while I was in Mexico. Cacti are a recurring symbol in my work um, due to their cultural significance. It is a symbol of the island of Tenochtitlan, the capital of the Mexica Empire, which is why, is it, why it is presented in the Mexican flag. I also included a weaving. It was my own take on a traditional Mexican weaving and a serape or a Mexican weaving is a must in La Sala. My digital piece was a series of images I took while I was in Mexico and images I took here in my hometown in the US. This piece is titled Ni de aquí ni de allá. My next piece is Sonyat, but it, it is a self portrait with abstracted cacti. The painting was inspired by both Alfredo Ramos Martinez painting um, Manca Coyota and by the song Soñat by Chicano Batman. This song is essentially about a woman being encouraged to keep dreaming despite being sad and despite the heaviness of the world. Thank you. Uh, up next is my colleague, Jamie Davidson. Hello, my name is Jamie Davidson and I am a photographer here at the college. My installation, Lights, Camera, Action, consists of a series of four fashion-inspired images. The purpose of this piece is to use light as a way of portraying allure and glamour that is consistent throughout fashion photography. These photographs are meant to bring a new take to fashion photography showcasing fashion and glamour without the inclusion of actual clothing. This glamorous attire shown here was created through the photoshopping of LED lights. I shot my model separate from the lights and then overlaid and liquefied the lights to fit the model in that given image. This process was very, very much consistent on trial and error as this series is meant to be something new that no one has ever seen before. In doing this, the lights showcase shape, line, texture and motion in these still images. Next, we have Lucia Gardner. Hi, my name is Lucia Gardner. I am a printmaker and mixed media based artist. Most of my work centers on the examination of preservation versus deterioration, as well as society's relationship with tradition and womanhood. My piece is called Another Year Older. It is about childhood nostalgia and family heirlooms. I created this work because I'm interested in the idea of something being frozen in time. This installation is in a way like a shrine on adolescence and also about creating a space that pays homage to the women that make these kind of spaces in the home. The women that make it a point to document the family legacy, making sure to never miss the chance of taking a photo at a birthday party, holiday, or simply a time they don't want to forget. These things I wouldn't even be able to look at generations later of my family and think about if it wasn't for them. I think the most fun thing about creating this work was finding objects that really worked with my vision. Um, going crazy looking at every table like surface at the antique shop in my town until my mom and I found th this child's desk. Um, my dad and I persuading a Home Depot worker to give us a discount on the wooden flooring. 
And of course, my colleague Shelly and I rushing to Hobby Lobby at the last second to gather some finishing touches. So I'm very thankful to those close to me for making this happen. And um, I'm just glad that I could bring this together, the relationship between both my findings and the creations that come together in this piece. Um, I often say that no matter the medium I'm working in, I create as if I'm making a collage intuitively and haphazardly, taking different materials and mediums and seeing how they change and succeed when put together. Thank you. Um, up next is my colleague, Jalen Giles Yule. Hi, everyone. Um, first of all, I'd like to give a thanks to all of my friends, family, loved ones, just my peers for coming in support tonight. Um, my name is Jalen Giles Yule, and I'm a fine arts major as well as a multimedia artist. The artwork that I have featured in our Influx exhibition is essentially my exploration of identity, or more so the queer identity, and what that necessarily means to individuals that identify within the LGBTQ plus community. My work is essentially a reflection of my own journey of me coming to understand my own sexuality and gender identity. Within the first piece that I have here, self-identify Self-Identity is a short documentary with a duration of 16 minutes and seven seconds that essentially explores what self-identifying means to 11 individuals, as well as the process and overall important experience for queer people. I encourage everyone after the show to view the piece in order to get a glimpse at um, just what the 11, the 11 individuals who volunteered to share their own personal experiences said within this piece. For my next piece, Live Your Truth. Live Your Truth is essentially a piece that explores the common experience um, that queer people live through as they begin to question themselves within a heteronormative society. The title is essentially a jab at the phrase that in my opinion is essentially contradictory. Um, the piece is seven, 70 by 72 inches and that it's made, it's also made from brown paper roll, chalk pastels, and the collage with both screen captured Google searches and my own personal journal entries. Because this piece was meant as a release for me, I essentially placed my journal entries pertaining to my own self-exploration within the piece, despite them not being able to be read by any of the viewers. Up next, the next presenting artist for, this for tonight is Lily Gilston. Lily, you're still muted. Sorry about that. Hi, <laughs> I'm Lily Gilston. I'm a multimedia fiber artist working in sculpture and installation. Uh, my thesis work is centered around the idea of building form and creating from what already exists, um, whether that be weaving into the curvilinear shapes of branches or finding inspiration um, in the tactile quality of handmade paper. Uh, I paired my installation with an audio piece that you might be able to hear in the background. Um, to build off of the idea of an otherworldly, but still of this world space um, it, within the white cube, uh, a quiet yet confrontational space that I invite the viewer to reflect on the relationship to the environment. Um, when I consider this relationship in my personal life, uh, I find myself in a gray area, here nor there. And as someone who cares deeply about the environment and with a passion for learning about the world around me. Um, there was a lot of room for growth and reflection, but I found not a lot of safe spaces to consider where you stand and what your values are to make mistakes and to learn from them. Um, I think it's easy to become disconnected with the world as it becomes familiar to you. Uh, so in this piece, I invite the viewer to reinvestigate their surroundings with new context. Um, my processes are forgiving and allow me to meditate on this relationship with the world around me. Um, in my process, I consider what's accessible to me and what I can transform into a thoughtful experience. Um, I continued my investigation of papermaking and book arts from a more sculptural and installation perspective. Um, my main goal for this work and for my work in the foreseeable future um, is to explore hands-on processes that create those tangible experiences um, that stick with the viewer long after they leave the gallery space. Uh, 
Up next, my talented colleague and friend, Samantha Lee Carney, will be presenting her work. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, I just can't see myself, so I don't know. <laughs> so hi, everybody. I'm Samantha Lee Carney. Um, I actually have a lot of work that revolves around this concept of where I've been. It's something I've been working on for a little over two years now. Um, but that concept goes into something about self-exploration and celebrates everything that made me. I recently found, my, found myself fixated on the kitchen, which is like the heart of the home. It's where life happens. Uh, so for me, the kitchen is where you notice a lot of like socioeconomic issues and um, whether it be the presence and use of fine china or where you split pieces of cheese, uh, the kitchen is where life is, right? Um, it was a reminder always of where I came from, how far I've come and the kitchen is a promise to myself about what I will have in my future and I will be able to use fine china. Um, so I hold on to these thoughts and it, within this series of two books, it's called uh, Abophobia slash Domestophobia. They are, it's two Coptic bound books whose pages are made of tunnel books. Um, each page is actually a kitchen from each of the houses that I've lived in. I screen printed those images onto a thick cardstock paper and then hand cut each of them with an X-Acto knife and then figured out this kind of the mechanics behind being able to make the pages fold flat so that the book can be flat and be taken with you kind of wherever you went. In addition to this, I also have a work that I titled The 25th Hour. Uh, for this work, I was taking pictures of myself doing whatever I was doing every 25 hours starting at 7.30 p.m. on April 1st of 2020. Um, these pictures kind of capture my everyday life. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. I have an alarm set on my phone it goes off and, the, and there's pictures of me sleeping. There's some one of me in the shower, you have me brushing my teeth, whatever I'm doing, I take a picture. So what I think this work is trying to talk about is that like for me, everything that you do has an impact on who you are and what you believe in and what you do. Everything you experience is part of what makes you. And in taking these pictures every day, I'm able to almost, not everything, but I'm able to share part of the things that make me me. So overall, my work is continuing this ritual of trying to hold on to things that I may not have control over, like memories and sentiments, and then things that are valuable to me. Up next is my colleague, Ryan Levy. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ryan Levy. I would say a majority of my work is very self-reflective of who I am as a person. The title of, this, of my installation is Where Have You Been, Where You Are. It's a self-reflective installation showcasing my journey to ultimately transform my body. I'm addressing the topics of struggle with body dysmorphia, stress eating, and the extent to which I go to to change my body. This is expressed through the use of photography and found objects. For the installation portion, I created a dining room environment. You can see a stuffed body figure sitting at one end of the table facing a mirror on the other end. The stuffed body figure represents how one with body dysmorphia can view themselves as imperfect or misshapen. In front of the figure is a play with a variety of vitamins ranging from apple cider vinegar to B12, things I've taken to help me in my process. On the other side with, with the mirror is a play with pastries. As part of my practice, I use now oversized clothing. I made a tablecloth out of shirts and a rug from jeans. The photography portion is a series of photos taken of me hiking. Going on hikes is an interest of mine that's become a source of stress relief, exercise, and a way to continue my photo practice. A common trait with those with body dysmorphia is that they tend to hide from the camera and being photographed, which is something I've admittedly done most of my life. Kind of ironic for someone who's a photographer. These photos present the idea of the distance traveled both mentally and physically as I continue to become more comfortable in my own skin. And next, I'd like to introduce friend and artist, Holly Littrell. Hi, everyone. I'm Holly. I'm a fine, fine art major with a minor in art history. And in the fall, I'll be continuing my education um, to pursue my master's degree in art history. I created the color, Colored Aura series, working from photographs that I edited on Photoshop. The work consists of four realistic oil paintings that explore mood and tone. 
The vibrance of the colors enhance the tone of each subject and therefore illustrates how I perceive the person's aura. The, the painterly backgrounds create an interesting tension that con contrasts with the realistic nature of the portraits. For this um, series, I strive to create a work that was fun, lighthearted, and compelling in order to personally combat the events of the last year and a half. Oil painting for me is like nothing else in the world. I lose all notion of time, hunger, stress, or anything else. I'm in my own little world and nothing else matters. And it's just me and the paint. So thank you for bearing witness to this and thank you for your time. Next, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Stephanie Rosenthal. Hi, I'm Stephanie Rosenthal and I'm an artist working primarily in painting and mixed media. My thesis show, Body Armor, is about unlearning the inappropriate over-sexualization of the female body that has been shamed and censored by society, which revolves primarily around the male gaze. Breasts aren't simply objects of desire, you know, they're functional, unique, and I wanted to capture all the different shapes, sizes, and colors of them, bringing in ideas of consumerism, censorship, and violation. Here is my boutique for them, for those with breasts to appreciate them in an environment free of judgment and stigma. I created these breastplates from found objects like strings, mesh, and flowers. They are held together by handmade paper, which I dipped them in while it was still pulp. I also felted many breasts. Um, well, here are the breastplates <laughs> while they're showing. I also felted many breasts, which are strange, fuzzy, and kind of funny. I like to view my process of making them as sort of painting with the wool. Um, because of their material and the space they exist in, they're not supposed to be sexual, which pertains to the female gaze. The female gaze is what I wanted to highlight. Um, breasts can be viewed as higher fashion. You know, They're displayed elegantly like jewelry to adorn the body. You can look at them similar to how one shops for bras, um, except you notice that nothing here in my installation actually covers you up. The breast plates are fragile with tons of holes. Uh, the breast sensor with more breasts. I play with concepts somewhere between a false sense of security and acceptance through desensitization. Uh, and next up is my colleague, Sarah Valenti. Hi, my name is Sarah Lenti and I'm a painter and a sculptor with my work usually falling somewhere in between those two. Um, Dismemorabilia is my painting. It's about women in abject theory. Throughout my four years, a lot of my work has been driven by this theme. I've been making pretty consistent work since sophomore year, but it wasn't until this year that I was really able to understand what all my artistic choices were leading me to and why I was drawn to certain symbols. Um, I had heard of abstract art before, but it wasn't until I started researching into it that I found that a lot of my decisions were completely validated by it and what the psychology behind certain imagery was and where that was coming from and how that fit into my narrative. Um, there's so much more to abject art than people realize. Um, nobody really talks about it. The whole thing is kind of a paradox within itself and abject art changes as we do. The things that cause psychological distress change as culture changes because it's all related. So this work represents my resolve of finally understanding what drives me and its connection to my personal experiences. The complexity of the piece is in the history that got me to this point, and these images and marks are supposed to be remnants of it all kind of combined into one, excuse me. A little bit about my process. Um, it's kind of chaotic. I don't really plan. I have an idea and materials are a means to an end. I would love to say that I research and I practice and I do experiments, but usually it's me trying to force a material into doing something that I think it can do, which sometimes works in my favor by juxtaposing weird textures with certain imagery. I've used silicone, slime, styrofoam, resin on paintings, and I've recently been interested in textiles, as you can see by the rug, all in effort of making my work confrontational and invasive as it lends itself to the object. Thank you everyone for coming and listening. Okay, so once again, uh, our website is tcnjfineart.com. Um, and if anyone has any questions, uh, please feel free to put them in the Q&A feature or in the chat below. Thank you.
Okay, we have our first question. Um, and this is for Ash. Um, Ash, how do you go about picking which animals best fit each piece? Um, personally, the animals that I choose are based on childhood folklore. So like Little Red Riding Hood and other questions similar to that. Um, specifically, the wolf has always been something that's followed me throughout my time at TCNJ. And I tend to lean towards wolves because they are very vicious and kind of iconic predator. So I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Yeah, and we, we have another question, and this isn't directed at anyone in particular, but uh, um, Michael asks, how did working from a distance over the past 14 months impact or influence your creative process? And I'm guessing that this is one that, um, that a lot of you will have an answer for. Do I have to raise my hand or can I just talk? Um, you can just, just unmute yourself and, and talk. Okay, so I was just gonna say, I think if anything, it made the period after this easier because I think all of us felt like we had this dependency on the studio and the equipment that we're used to using, but then throughout COVID and everything else, it kind of forced us to figure out how to do these things at home and like, it's going to make having a practice after this way easier because you realize you really don't need everything that the school provides. Yeah, absolutely. And to add on to that, I mean, if anything, we've all learned to be adaptable and to develop that studio practice that, you know, people any other year, they would have to, you know, return home or you know, back to not having access to a studio and equipment and kind of relearn their process, whereas we were kind of thrown into it and we had to learn at the same time. So I think it's been a really unique experience. And in the end, I mean, I'm glad it worked out the way it did. I think, I think really great work came out of it. I definitely agree with your point too, Lily. I think like, um, it's definitely shown like me, like how to kind of like work with materials in which I have here. Um, and I think that that's something that is like a nice trait that was developed from it. I know at the same time, it was very stressful <laughs> just trying to be able to work within the confines of a household, like where you want to keep things like nice and like clean and stuff like that, especially if you're working with materials that aren't traditionally kind of like clean. <laughs> um, I think that one thing in particular also is kind of like being able to, I want to say, make yourself work in the space because I feel like with us being able to have um, access to like studios and stuff like that on campus, it's very accessible. And you kind of like have like the sort of like thought process that you have a, a, a studio open to you. So you're kind of like forcing yourself to work in a sense. But I think trying to like keep yourself like within like a schedule where you say like, where you say to yourself, like I have to like manage my time wisely and actually like commit to working right now and like get myself to working right now. I think that's something that I kind of struggled with. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, just like it's like you guys are all saying, like it kind of forces you to work within your means. And like after graduation, a lot of us are not going to have those resources. I will agree with Jalen, though. It's very frustrating knowing that oh, if I was just at school, I would just use this machine. But because I'm home, I got to, you know, rig a drill press and make this work and make this work. But, um, you know, just like that, I agree with my colleagues and my peers that, you know, I, I am appreciative of kind of having this experience and, you know, grateful that we all were very active in our group chats and things so that we always were able to make things work. I agree. I think it's forced us all to be a little more creative than we thought we were ever going to have to be. So I've enjoyed it. I think it also puts us on the same level as um, artists, uh, just other artists, working artists, because um, we were all put in the same place of having to work at home and having to do things that maybe we weren't used to. Um, and I think that was humbling for artists everywhere. And it kind of, I think it broke down this like elitist barrier of having to be so professional all the time. And it was kind of um, a great time for um, just the art world to be like, hey, um, 
let's come together and figure out ways to do this at home and help each other out. Great, thank you all. Those were great answers. Um, let's see, there's another question to all of you and this is from Anita. She, she says, first, very well done, all of you. Um, could you reflect a little bit on how your work has changed since you first came to TCNJ? I don't answer this oh, one. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, Jalen. Um, <laughs> so I guess like since I first came to TCNJ, like even before I got to TCNJ just applying, I was a 2D artist. And now I think I've gone from 2D all the way to 3D. And that's partially due to the great professors that we have, especially Mark and Lisa Lott. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how I've changed. I think you're kind of relate as well. I know that I mostly worked with like traditional illustration prior to coming to TCNJ. Um, and I oftentimes just did portraiture of, of drawings of people basically that I knew. I feel like for me, what really changed was essentially like contributing theory and like thought behind my work and just contributing a lot of intention into my work. Um, I think that definitely just being able to think in reference to like other artists or even draw inspiration from other artists or also just like tell myself or question myself, like, why am I doing certain things within my artwork? That's mostly what changed for me, just kind of like driving intention throughout my work altogether. I think, um, oh, sorry. I think uh, initially when I first came to TCNJ, I also considered myself just like an illustrator. I didn't really know exactly what I wanted to create. And over the course of these past few years, I've become a lot more introspective, trying to figure out what I want to incorporate into my art. And then once the pandemic hit and I was working remotely, I learned that I like to like insert myself and ideas of the body more into my work, which I didn't do before. I never thought I would make installations or even like performances, which I have done. So, I mean, this, I guess, relates to also the last question on this one. Yeah, to add on to what, you know, everyone is saying, I think like for me, the idea of like what an artist can be and like what an artist even looks like you know, that has completely changed. Like I went into this program thinking, oh, people are like painters or people are sculptors. It's like, they're so, or photographers, you know, but like you can really do anything. <laughs> and that's kind of what I've learned. And I've, you know, in my own processes, I've, it's like trial and error, you know, and you find things that fit and you keep doing them and you learn from failure, <laughs> honestly, but you know, that's okay. Cause that's, that's the best way to learn is to just keep trying. So. Yeah, if I could add to that, I also wanted to just uh, note how I admire this this program. Like we've all had our struggles, but with the way that this is set up, I've been able to try everything and anything like between six foot welded ballerina sculptures or 16 minute documentaries about the male gaze. Like everything I've wanted to try through this studio and like the program I've been able to. And then I've kind of centered myself and been able to come back and say okay I want to be an oil, an oil painter and um, then with that my professors have been able to push me and say okay well you need to be a little more free or you need to tighten this area like the proportions aren't right or something like that so I just have had a lot of growth here and I'm really grateful for it. Yeah I think like you know, I think we've all definitely grown, but for me specifically, I knew I came into TCNJ knowing I wanted to do something with sculpture. And little did I realize I was going to end up doing everything with paper the way that I do, like knowing how much I hated all the drawing classes, anything that I had to do with paper, I didn't like it. But I realized like it was because I was keeping it 2D. When kind of once I took the bookmaking class with Mackie um, two years ago is when I just kind of totally lit up there. So I kind of figured out how to hone in on what I actually want to do, which is definitely a good thing. I feel like we all came in with questions and we're leaving making statements. Great, that's a great answer. <laughs> um, there's another question that um, I think is also kind of about this past year. Um, and you all talked a little bit about kind of how you adjusted your studio practice to being at home rather than in the studio. 
Um, and Jenny had a question. Um, she says, your work has transformed and ascended beyond our isolation this past year. How have you been able to create without the constant input during your program, um, during your program from colleagues and faculty um, during your studio processes? So I guess, how did you adjust to having to work a lot more on your own and not being able to have that constant feedback that you get when you're you know, in the senior studio till midnight or whenever? I mean, I'll start. Hi, Manj. Um, so like not being in the studio with kind of all the commentary, I actually found it less stressful because I feel like a lot of the times we're in the studio and people are always like, oh, it would be cool if you did this. It'd be cool if you did that. And like as much as I appreciate the input from my colleagues, sometimes I just don't want it. Sometimes if I want it, I will ask for it. And we kind of had more control over what we were doing. And because there was less input, I feel like it was more genuine of what we wanted to say. Definitely. I see what your point, Sam. I just disagree because I feel like I miss being in the studio so much. Not like this is my studio. I don't know if you can see there's an easel behind me. And without Lily and Sarah on either side of me telling me what's wrong with <laughs> what I'm doing, I sometimes I would just text them a picture and be like, guys, what do I do? And they would do the same thing. So I think feedback from your peers is something that's so important, at least in my practice. Like I always need feedback and um, that's something I've, I definitely struggled with this semester, but I think having our group chats and having our class meetings has been really helpful. Um, and I don't know what I'm going to do without you guys next year. <laughs> I'll just say, Hallie, I like, I also miss the studio. Just all of you leave me alone. <laughs> there are definitely like pros and cons to it, but I think it has helped us become a lot more independent without, you know, having to rely on other people's input. Um, but you know, we all know we're all a text away from each other and our professors if we need it. It's not the same as in person, but communication is key. We have each other. Cool. Um, I also have a couple of um, questions for a specific artists. First, um, someone asked Stephanie, what materials did you use to make the body armors? Yeah, um, I used a bunch of different materials, I guess. Um, so for the breastplates, I had like this mannequin torso and I put um, just like different found materials. Oh, yes, you could show it. <laughs> um, I don't know if you want to like scroll down to the breastplate parts. Yeah, so some of them have flowers. Some have string, uh, I'm trying to think. Some have like mesh, just like all different kinds of things I found around the house. And then I had taken a paper making class. So I had pulp available, which I like, I guess dipped all the different materials in and then spread them out on the mannequin to create these. And then for the felt breasts, I, it's just wool, merino wool which I needle felted and I also wet felted, two different techniques, but yeah, that's, I think everything. And then I cut some plexiglass to display them on, which is like floating with fish wire. <laughs> cool. Um, there's also a question for Madison um, from Haley. Um, Madison, how long did it take you to create your sculpture? It's incredible. And I'm so curious to learn more about the prep process. Um, thank you for your question. Um, it took me about, I would say the entire semester, maybe two and a half months to complete. Um, my process was a lot of trial and error and being explorative with the material, um, especially my top piece of the stalactite. Um, that was just layers of spray foam. What can I do with it? Building it up, carving it at some points to make it get its shape. And then it kind of just took off from there. It was, it was really explorative and it was um, a lesson learned with everything that I did. Yeah, it was amazing to see that come into the gallery. All of a sudden, there was this huge thing in the middle of the room. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, there are also just some comments that I can share. Um, 
Brooke says, congrats to all of you. This is a wonderful pre presentation of everyone's body of work. I know this year was very challenging and showing your work online is a new way of viewing artwork. I definitely would like to see the exhibition in person, but on a positive note, I think more people are able to see it now that we live in a virtual world. Thank, thanks for having me join in. And I guess that raises a question for me too, like how, how did the online exhibition come together? And like, how do you see that? Do you see that as an ongoing part of your art practice? I feel like it's kind of impossible to be an artist nowadays and not have some sort of like online presence. And I feel like before COVID, TC and J didn't really have too much about the seniors. So it was kind of hard to keep track of everybody and like see what had been done before. Um, so now like with the online presence, I think it'll be a lot easier for new students to reach out when they're interested in a material or in an idea or something. Um, so I feel like I don't know, it kind of just helps the community as a whole and keeping people together that pass through here, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's a good point, yeah. I was gonna say, I agree with that point. And especially I feel like as artists, I think it kind of like led us to, I wanna say, um, see the importance when it comes to like documenting our art pro properly as well. I know like personally, when it comes to having this sort of like online medium, um, essentially it like helped me think of like how in ways people are going to be able to view the art correctly and stuff like that. So I think that that's something that definitely kind of like made me consider things as well. But going back to what you were saying about like the online presence, I think that like it helps also when it comes to like being like a developing artist, kind of putting yourself in different avenues that people will be able to view your artwork. Great, thank you. There's also um, a question for Steph. Um, Matthew asks, Steph, what inspired you to make your pieces? <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Um, okay, so I guess initially with, I, I had this one pair of felt boobs that I started with. Uh, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, it's, the, yeah, those pink ones on the top left. Um, I was thinking about, you know, those like, funny bathing suits of like guys torsos that like girls sometimes wear and stuff this was kind of like that but reversed and so it brought up this whole discussion of like censorship and stuff but from there I kind of just branched out because I wanted to keep working with this um so yeah <laughs> cool um and then there's one more question for all of you um Let's see, where did it go? Robin asks, or Robin says, first, great work all. Where are you thinking of going after graduation? How do you see yourselves exploring new ways of art making after college? That's like the question of the hour. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, I don't know, like we were talking about before, like being home and like learning to adapt to like your home studio or you know whatever the setup might be um I don't know it's kind of like opened some opportunities in a lot of unexpected ways uh so I don't know I'm personally open to anything and I'm going to keep you know making work um after college and just kind of see where it takes me also like it helps that I'm like in kind of like a flow now being at home I know a lot of us have kind of, um, we're, I mean, we're each other's network at this point. Of course, it will expand and change um, in the next few years after um, graduation. Uh, but um, I think what a lot of us have kind of become to realize um, in this past year is that being an artist um, isn't just about, uh, graduate school or, um, and it's not just about like going to New York, um, especially with things being online now, like there's just a lot more avenues that I think we may have not always realized. Um, 
I know a lot of us are interested in relocating to Philly soon, um, <laughs> maybe together. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I know for me personally, I want to hopefully just apprentice at a print shop um, and learn, just learn from people who know what they're doing and just let them order me around to help them with prints so that I can get used to it or something. I'm kind of in the same boat, but different boat <laughs> in the same direction. I, I want to go into museum work, so, uh, but I fully plan on continuing painting for the rest of my life. And um, this is how it's going to be in somewhere in an apartment or something and making it work and selling paintings on the side as I continue to pursue a career in the curatorial field, working in museums, trying to promote, you know, artists like these people. and. Um, so let's keep in touch. <laughs> cool. Anyone else? I do have a couple more questions. Um, one person actually, it wasn't a question, but it was a comment and I can't find it right now. So I can't. Oh, here it is. Um, Janie says to all, all of you, um, along the lines of the online presence, I have to say that I have loved seeing all of your process videos on Instagram. Um, and I would just make a plug that if you haven't looked at it to check out the, um, the Instagram feed because you'll see a lot more images of artwork there and you will see those process videos and those are really, really cool to see. Um, and then someone else asked, Michael asked, do you think knowing that you were going to present and share your work largely online influenced your creative decision-making because more people wouldn't see it in person? I think it changed a lot how we learn to document our work. I think that was a big thing. Like. I mean, my ideas of course developed, but it, it was more understanding like, okay, how am I gonna photograph this once I create it? Cause I wasn't gonna let that hinder me. Um, you know, it's unfortunate it couldn't be viewed in person, but we took videos, so many photos, like that's how we made it work. I think that like, like Steph is saying, as far as documentation, that is so important, especially for those of us who did installations and sculptural work, because it's not, it's not something flat, you know, with anybody's paintings or drawings, you can take a picture of it. And as long as you kind of have it head on, you can zoom in and out and get all your details that way. But in a, in a sculpture or an installation, you have to get all angles or, it, you know, or you're going to end up missing something. So, um, yeah, a big thing was documentation. And I know with my books, I actually, you know, I have on the website where you can click through and it looks like you're flipping through. So. I think that's one thing that I just wish that it was different because with some of our work, I mean, not mine, but other people's work, it's, it's an experience. It's, you get enveloped into it. It's supposed to make you feel these sort of emotions that you haven't felt before because you've never seen anything like this. Like, for example, when I saw Madison's piece, I was just stunned. I didn't know how to feel because it's a very interesting thing. And I think with online work, it does depend on the medium. You still might get the feeling or whatever, but even with paintings, I think in-person art in general as a whole is always gonna be different. So when you can see art in person, it's an amazing experience. But under these circumstances, I think we've all done a really good job of documenting and you know learning as we go. And we did it last semester and now we learned from that and now we're doing it again. And yeah, it's been a ride. Um, and one final question, um, Kaylee asks, was it difficult trying to choose what to show for this show, for this exhibition? Um, I think everybody was extremely true to themselves with this. Um, if you haven't gotten a chance, if you look on the website and you look at all our solo shows, I think that gives a lot of context to the work that we're showing this semester. Like it was a very clean progression of things. We researched over the break and then 
made our final statements. Um, yeah, I think um, being able to work the semester before, like Sarah was saying with the solo shows really helped everyone um, kind of get to that like catalyst point of, of realizing, okay, what is this rest of the year gonna be about? And it's it's hard to make that decision, definitely. And of course, when you're working um, and you're not working in a studio, you're figuring out how to make things um, in ways you've never made them before, things are gonna change. And a lot of our work changed um, drastically sometimes. Um, just, you know, when we didn't expect it to. Um, but I think, uh, especially if, if you're um, an underclassman watching this and you're thinking about like, um, when you're a senior and going into this, like, don't, don't even think about any of that yet. Just like, think about the things you want to create and just, and just create them. And then you'll kind of see what works and you'll have your colleagues to um, kind of work those things out with and your professors and um, just don't be afraid for things to change because they always change and we we have to be ready to troubleshoot um, and that's okay and sometimes that's really good. I feel like a lot of us also spoke from personal experience in regards to our work as well and I could definitely see how like like Sarah was saying, like a lot of us kind of like poured into like our artwork, essentially our own like experiences. And I think that even speaks in testament to like the Tyler Brush show being in flux and kind of just kind of like going through things and kind of like adapting to things or just being constantly in motion. So I feel like honestly, I want to say that like it, it probably, I don't think it really was difficult to kind of like think about things in terms of like what we would do for this semester. I know like me personally, I kind of just kind of put like what I wanted to talk about in regard to like what I was going through at the moment. Yeah, I think we're all pretty true to ourselves and what we want to say with our work and what we want to do. I know for me personally, I did like a complete 180 from my solo shows and it was really me wanting to explore and do it. So I went and I did it. Like you should not be scared at all. If you have a complete 180 and you want to try a new medium, go ahead and try it because you don't know how it's going to turn out. And I personally want to change a thing. So. Great, thank you all. Um, I want to say I was lucky enough to see the exhibition in person and I was so excited to see all of your work in the gallery. And I'm so glad that you all got to install it and document it and share it with everyone. Um, for the people who get to see it in person and the people who will see it on the website that you should you should all be really proud of the work that you did. Um, I will turn it over to Lily and Elizabeth Mackey um, for any final thoughts. Okay, I'd like to just oh boy I'm so dark in here. <laughs> um, I just want to say congratulations to everyone and a few things about this semester that I think were very unique and uh, problems that you had to solve that were much greater than we've had in the past. Having a um, virtual exhibition, which we did in the spring, um, but also then having the traditional gallery exhibition created almost double double the concentration and work that you had to do and ways of thinking about your work. It wasn't just documenting it, it was about how do you deal with the space that you can't get into to the last minute. So there are many uh, sort of handicaps that, um, you know, we were holding our breath at times and, but you all went in and just sort of tackled the problems on the spot and really thought through the problems. Um, that you couldn't plan, plan for beforehand. And you did a fabulous job. Um, and I think you had a very successful exhibition, which I am so uh, sorry that everyone can't see because I think it's really um, a wonderful experience. There are so many of you that just looking at things online is just not enough because it is about being in the environment. It's about walking around. Even the things on the wall, you know, even the paintings, you know, the, the photographs, the way they're hung, the way uh, you can experience them is very important uh, for the use of the gallery. 
The other thing that's very unique about this group um, is that you are just so organized and work so well together. You know, you're such a, a good community, you know, and you know, I'd ask something and then all of a sudden everything sort of circulated and the answer would come back. And one person would jump in at one time and somebody else would jump in at another time uh, to try to solve the problems that we had. When we were photographing the work, it was like a flurry of all kinds of energy and activity going on with lots and lots of photographs that ended up making the final. So it wasn't, it was never one person's energy, it was a group participation. And I think that's a really strong part. I also feel that you do have established practices, that you are many steps ahead when you graduate. And many of you have thought about what do I do next? I mean, not all, everybody didn't talk about it, but everybody seems to have some very concrete ideas about where they want to go and how they're gonna get there. And that's very mature. Uh, you've been fabulous to work with, I'll miss you very much. Um, it's been really a very easy class and a wonderful to watch your development and growth because everybody has changed a lot. You know, sometimes you think, oh, I'm just doing what I've been doing, but no, it's not like that. You've all taken a lot of risks. And in many cases, you've made totally new discoveries um, in your work that you know, part of being home and part of having to work in that way and think differently has created that. So I think that will carry through with the work that you do in the future. Also, I hope you remain a group and support each other because I think that's really important as well. So thank you for being wonderful students and uh, adding to my life as well. And I would like to thank everyone that's come here tonight. I mean, it's a very, it's a wonderful group of people, some great questions. And please take time to spend some time with the website because I think there's lots of great things. We also, another aspect, other parts of the uh, web for the college have different aspects of this course's work through the, through the semester. So I think there's some other things to see as well. Okay, thank you and best of luck. I will, I'm not letting you go yet. So <laughs> to all of you. Thank you, Maggie and Margaret for helping us through this semester and everybody who donated and came tonight also. I guess this is a closing now um, and I would like to thank everyone and it was an excellent presentation. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, thank you student thank for you. all your really great work. Mm -hmm.